How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kaz and welcome back to another video. Today I'm bringing you guys an absolute banger. Today we're going to be making a CSGO external skin changer. Now before I get into it, I would like to say that uh, if you enjoy this content and you'd like to see more, be sure to drop a like and subscribe. And if you have absolutely any questions or need some help, I have a Discord server, so come join us over there and shoot a message on the server. We are very happy to help you. Now before I actually get into the code, let's talk about how CSGO skin changes work. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through your local player's weapons and we're going to get the weapon entity pointer and then we're going to set the m underscore i item id high offset to negative one. What that's going to do is it's going to force your weapons to use their fallback pain kits and this is where the skin changer comes into play. We're going to set all of the fallback values to whatever we want which is going to force the skins to show how we want them. So without further ado, let's fucking get into the code. I'm going to begin by opening a Visual Studio project. I'm going to make an empty project and save it to my desktop. I'm going to call it skin changer create now once visual studio is open first things first is we're going to come to the top here we're going to switch from debug to release and then we're going to switch from x64 to x86 next we're going to need to change a few properties so go ahead and right click on your project over here go to properties and we're going to make sure that the c++ language standard is c++ 20 go ahead and apply then come over here to advanced and change the character set to use multi byte character set now we can go ahead and create our main.cpp file. This is going to be a source file and we're going to call it main. This is where our skin change is going to run. Now we're going to need to create a header file and this is going to hold our memory header, which is going to allow us to access memory. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know which memory class we'll be using. I'll have a link to that in the description below. You're going to come over to this page and you're going to go ahead and copy all of this and you're going to paste it into your memory.h file. Now, what this class does is it's going to open a handle and it's going to get the process ID and it's going to allow us to read and write process memory. Of course, you can do this by yourself, but uh, we're going to be using this class in this video. Now we can move on to main and the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and include the memory.h file and we can go ahead and create our entry point. Now, before we go any further, we're going to need a whole bunch of offsets for this. So uh, I'm going to create a namespace called offset. Now, I already have the offsets here, so I'm going to go ahead and paste them in. But I suggest you go ahead and pause the video and grab these offsets. To grab offsets, you're going to go to the second link in the description below, and you're basically going to go ahead and search for whichever offsets you need, and you're going to paste them in here. Here is a list of all the offsets you're going to need, so go ahead and grab those and come back when you're done. All right, now that you have your offsets, we can go ahead and create our hack loop. That's just going to be an infinite while loop. You can do that like so. Now, this loop is going to run a billion times per second, which is not necessary. So we're going to go ahead and sleep this loop. To do that, you're going to come to the top and you're going to include thread. Once you have thread included, you can go ahead and sleep the while loop like so. We're going to sleep this loop for two milliseconds using std this thread sleep for. Now, before we do anything else, we're going to have to set up our memory class and get the address of our modules. So to initialize our memory class, we are going to do this. We're going to create an object of our memory class and we're going to pass in csgo.exe as our process. Next, we can get our address of client and engine by calling memory.getModule address and passing in client and engine.dll. Now, before we go any further, we are going to create a little function here, which is going to return the paint kit of the skin that we want. That function is going to look something like this. We're creating a function called get weapon paint and it takes an item definition. Now, we're going to create a little switch statement in this and uh, this is what it's going to look like. Now, this might look a little bit confusing, but this switch statement is going to be working off of item definitions. We can use item definition to determine which item we're holding. Now, to actually get the value of item definitions, I will have a link in the description below. But as we can see, a deagle is one, an elite is two, a five seven is three, etc. So as you can see over here, we are, over here we are using case one, which is the deagle, and we are returning a number. Now, the number that you are going to return is going to be the ID of the skin. So let's say we want an orb dragon law. We can search over here for dragon law. As we can see, dragon law is three forty four. If we come over here and we search for the AWP, the AWP is item definition 9. So as we can see over here, I have item, I have case 9 for the AWP and I'm returning 344, which is a dragon law. So go ahead and fill this up with all the skins you want and we can continue. Now, the first thing we are going to do in this while loop is we're going to get our local player and we can do that like so. We're going to use memory.read. We're going to read a uint pointer off of client plus our local player offset. Now come up to the top here and go ahead and include the array header. We need to include the array because we're going to be reading an array, which is going to be our active weapons. And we can do that like so. We're going to read an std array of unsigned longs, which is size eight off of local player plus the my h weapon plus the h my weapon offset. Now, if you look 
at this offset over here. It's called it's called M underscore H my weapons. H stands for handle, and in the source engine, a handle is an unsigned long. So that is why we are reading an array of unsigned longs. Now the reason we're using std array is because that allows us to make a really neat little for loop like so. This is called a range based for loop, and it's very neat, and it's uh it's going to allow us to loop through this array that we read and check the handle. Now, because we have weapon handles, we're going to need to get the weapon pointer using the entity list, and we can do that like so. We're going to get the weapon pointer by reading a UN pointer, and the address we're going to read is going to be client plus the entity list. Now, this is important over here. We're using a bit mask over here to get the entity index in DW entity list, and from that, we're going to get the weapon pointer. Now, obviously, you aren't always going to have eight weapons, right? You might just have a pistol or a pistol and a knife, so uh, we're going to have to make sure our weapon is valid, and we can do that like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check if we actually want to apply a skin to the weapon because let's say you don't want to apply a skin to a 5.7 and you're holding a 5.7. We don't want to do any skin change occurred on that so we can do that like so. We're going to create a little if statement here and we're going to create a variable inside it called paint and we're going to call our get weapon paint function and we're going to pass in the uh, item definition index of the weapon. Now please keep in mind that this is a short. This is very important. The item definition is a short. Now if this returns true this means that we do want to apply a weapon to the skin. So that means we are going to execute the code inside of here. Now in CSGO, you can apply as many skins as you want, but uh, you're gonna need to actually call something called force update, which is going to update all the skins in, in your view model. So if we change the skin, we're going to need to call this and we can check whether or not we wanna call this like so. We're gonna create a boolean here and we are going to read the fallback paint kit of uh, the weapon that we are holding. If it is not equal to what we want it to be, so let's say you pick up an AWP and the AWP has like some shitty skin like a pink DD pat, but you want it to have a, um, a dragon law, then this is going to be true because it's not going to be equal. And that means that we do want to update the skin. Now, if we do want to update the skin, we are going to call memory.write. We're going to write an in 32 And this is very important here. We're going to write an in 32 to, um, as you can see over here, engine plus DW client state. So this is the client state pointer plus 174. This takes us to a variable in the client state class called delta tick. And when you set delta tick to negative one, this forces a full update of CSGO. So it's very ghetto, but uh, it does need to be done. Now in between these two lines, um, we are going to actually do our skin changer code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set m underscore i item id high to negative one. We can do that like so. We're going to write an in32 to weapon plus m underscore i item id high, and we're going to write it to negative one. This is going to force the weapon to use the fallback values. Now obviously we need to set the fallback values, so let's do that. The first two values we're going to set are going to be the paint kit and the wear. The wear is obviously uh, the float value, the wear of the skin, so how damaged it is, or, or the quality of the skin, and um, the paint kit is the actual skin that you want. Remember, you've already set uh, your paint kits up here, and that's going to be stored inside of this variable here. So we're going to write this variable to uh, m underscore n fallback paint kit. And we're gonna set the wear to the lowest wear. Obviously set this to whatever you want. Now this is all that I'm gonna be using in this video, but let's say you want to uh, set the stat track of the weapon. I'll show you how to do that too. Over here, I have some lines commented out. This first line is setting the seed of the weapon. So if you wanna have a specific seed for your weapons, obviously uncomment this and uh, write the seed to whatever you want. Now these two lines are for making stat track. As we can see, we are setting stat track to 1337. Uh, and if you do this, you're gonna have a problem. It's going to say uh, user error right your stat track is going to not work correctly to fix that stat track error what you need to do is you actually you need to write to uh, m underscore i account id of the weapon and you need to write that to the weapon's original owner xuid low when you do that you will have working stat track so to do stat track, you need these two lines and to set the seed, you need this one. I'm not going to use them just because I don't want to, but uh, that's how you would go about doing that. Now, with all of that out the way, we should actually be done with our skin changer. Uh, remember, here are your offsets. Um, this is where you're going to set whatever skins you want. We're going to look through our active weapons. We're gonna get the weapon pointer, we're gonna make sure it's valid, and then we're gonna check if we actually want to apply a skin to it. Before we do anything, we're gonna see if the skin has already been applied. If it has been applied, then um, we're not going to then we're not gonna force an update, but if it hasn't been applied, we are going to need to update, unfortunately. And remember, we're going to set the skin. So let's go ahead and build this, and I'll catch you guys in game to test it. All right, so I'm in game, and I'm in my skin changer folder. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the release folder and run skinchanger.exe, and as we can see, we have a front side misty. If I go ahead and shoot at the AWP, 
I have an op dragon now. Now, as you can see, the HUD hasn't, hasn't updated, so just go ahead and throw that out and grab it again. And as you can see, fully working AWP Dragon Law. We also have my USPS Neo Neo over here, which is pretty cool. So that just about sums up my video on making a simple external skin changer. This took me a while to get it to a position where I was comfortable with releasing it. Obviously, it's not the best in the world, but it does work. Remember to come and change your skins to whatever you want over here. Uh, use the correct item definition and set the paint kit. And um, remember, if you want to do a stat track or anything like that, uh, you're going to go ahead and use these lines over here. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe. And uh, until next time. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.